do you have a toxic life or toxic people around you often? And you're like, man, I need to change that. I know we all have issues. Let me tell you. On today's episode of Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show, we're going to talk about how to get rid of toxic things and people in your life with the one and only Coach Rob Silver. Stay tuned. Welcome to Get Inspired with Jason Roselle, the podcast and YouTube show. Are you ready to conquer the challenges in your life, business, wellness, and relationships? Are you ready to love parts of your life you didn't know you can love or succeed in? The Get Inspired show brings you amazing topics and a variety of guests ranging from celebrities, reality stars, social media influencers, entrepreneurs, and major success stories. You will gain a large amount of knowledge and priceless advice in health, business, social media marketing growth, relationships, life balance, and much more. I hope you're ready to get inspired because the show starts now. Rob Silver is a Qigong and wellness coach who has helped hundreds of men and women transform from the inside out. His power and energy is going to take you to another level. So make sure you have your pen and paper. What is up, Rob? Hey, 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 Jay. What's up today, man? Good to see you. So blessed and happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me, dude. Hey, my pleasure, man. It's a good day to have a good day. Um, before we start, I always like to warm the audience up a little bit, and you especially. If you could have any superpower, right, any superpower, what would that be and why? Unlimited love, Jay. Woo! Unlimited love, yeah. That's it. I, I mean, and, and if I got to break that down, I will. But uh, if we just sit with it for a minute... um, the reason I would want unlimited love is because I love giving love. And there's been times where I've given out so much love and later on I felt empty and I wish I had more love to give. Yep. So uh, that would be it, man. Yeah, I can relate with you because, uh, you know, within my psychology studies, I learned a lot about, you know, attachment styles. Some people are anxiously attached to people and some people are avoidant attachment styles. And you, like myself, were both more anxious right yes and we a hundred percent dude yeah yep yeah i've been accused of being called an attacker almost with love dude so yeah no exactly i i I completely feel the heat (laughs) (laughs) no pun intended right (laughs) listen rob um you know a lot of people get on our nerves right especially people watching right now or listening it could be your boss it could be your wife it could be your kids it could be your co-workers right so like how do we distinguish you know, who's getting on our nerves, which is normal. And what is toxic? Like, how do we know? Oh, my God, this is more serious. And how do I how do I gauge this? Well, it's, it's wild, Jay. When you ask that question, the first thing that comes up for me are like the four agreements. And I think it's the second agreement is like, don't take things personal. And in my life, I'm not going to lie to you. I take everything personal right away. Right. But we were talking about meditation and self-awareness. So after I take it personal, I have time to sit with myself. I have time to reflect because when I took it personal, it was in judgment, right? And we know better, but in that moment, you don't know better. But later on, you can feel better by feeling into what you were feeling into and reflect. So I don't really feel there's a lot of negative emotions. It's just things that sometimes, aka, trigger us to look inside of ourselves and see, hey, is there a way I could be around this that next time it doesn't trigger me or have me act in this manner? Because I'd like to have control over that. I completely Agree. And and once we gain that control through that method that you just explained, yes. but we feel the other person or the environment is just more critical. Do you recommend just removing yourself from it, whether it's a job, a boss, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife? I don't, Jason. You know, I actually don't recommend removing yourself away from it. And I know that's probably a strange answer because most people are like, get out of there. You got to get out of there. You got to go. Get away from them. But the thing is, is your energy attracted that person. It attracted that into your life. So you were attracted to it because there was something there for you to learn. Now, maybe you got to school and go, I don't want to learn this anymore. I want to quit. I'm not even trying to graduate. I'm not trying to get through this season. No, this is too freaking hard. Forget it. But what I would actually do is find another way to be in that energy for a while. And what I've noticed from my own experience, the more I'm able to be in a situation that I'm uncomfortable with, normally that situation eliminates itself. Yep. Yep. 
But what, see, I, I like to challenge my guests. How long is too long? Ooh, I mean, that's a fucking bad answer, dude, or an answer. I can't even answer that. Like, it's, you know, I'm sitting here now, and I'm thinking about things that I saw eight years ago that I was supposed to decide on, and I just decided on them, like, this week. So the only thing I can tell you is moving forward, I won't wait eight years. I'll make decisions a lot quicker yeah. based upon the experience of going through all that. So, you know, the time period is as long as you're able to put up or move through something. And I don't even want to say put up with it, because if I was in the gym every day lifting heavy weights for, like, eight years, right, and then one day you go, you know what? I'm kind of good. I've I've done this. I really enjoyed this. When I walk out that gym, I still have all those muscles. I have all that. Now, it doesn't mean I need to go back in the gym and keep lifting heavy weights. I could decide to go do yoga or do something else, but I still have all the experience and the energy from that, right? I've just decided I want to do something different now. And I think we all do that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, let me ask you this. How can we recognize within ourselves if we actually have and are living a toxic life, because I have my, you know, understanding, I want to hear your perspective of self-reflection. What are some things we can ask ourselves, the audiences can ask themselves to ensure, hey, am I living to my fullest potential or is my life pretty toxic? Well, the first question you ask yourself, Jason, is how do I feel right now? And then sitting in that for a moment, right? And as you sit in that feeling, if you start to notice you feel sad, you feel anxious, and then you go pick up your phone and you don't pay attention to it, that's toxic. Because what your body really wanted you to do was sit with that for a while and notice it and feel into it. But when you don't do that and you turn away from it, then it starts to get louder and it starts to grow more. And then we call it toxic, but it's matter. It's an idea that you had, right? an idea that you had that's festering inside of you. And when you give it attention, you find peace in that idea. But when you don't give it attention, it gets louder and louder and louder. And then you start calling it names and you start getting mad at it when it's just your energy, it's your chi. But you didn't take time to sit and notice it and create that loving relationship with yourself. You actually called it toxic. You called it ignorant. You called it mean. You you attracted it and told it, man, get out of here. I don't really want to be with you. But you attracted it. So now that it's true attracted, it's just like in an AA meeting, the first thing you got to do is be in a point of acceptance. I asked for this. And see how I got a smile on my face? Because you better be happy that you actually can find humor. That Hey, I can ask for this shit. Yeah. Because we have to find humor in order to get out of the sadness. We have to look at the full story and go, yeah. And we all know that. That's the difference between being a kid and an adult, right? Like, we can still live kid life, kids like, but when we're adults, we've had enough experience to know when you're fucking up, like you just got to be honest with yourself. Absolutely. I, I, I love that answer. Wow. That was deep. I like it. My hair, my hair is sticking up, boy. Woo. Okay. <laughs> so let's, let's switch it up a little bit. Um, you know, I have my set questions for you for all guests, but I like to also include mine. Now, what do you do in the occasion? Cause you said something before about you attracted these things, these, you attract these people. What do you do in the circumstances? Because I'm a firm believer, sometimes we attract people who are in much desperate need to become who we are, right? So that's, yeah. so what do you think about that? And I say that because, look, before I became a coach, and that was part of the reason why I became a coach, a lot of people were coming like, man, I want to become like you. I want to be this and that. And I was like, huh. But I really, I noticed that they were dealing with a lot of stuff. Right. And sometimes, you know, I know I've dated people many years ago that I'm like, man, you know, they they party a lot. They don't want to party anymore. And they saw that I stopped partying. What, what's your take on that? On, on how do we protect ourselves from attracting good and negative people? Because sometimes it can suck the energy and life out of you. <laughs> well, like, first of all, I'll deal with the protection part. Right. Like. We come into this world protected. When I think of protection, I think of a rose. And as a rose grows through anything, it has thorns on it. And it doesn't go, hey, get off of me. It just naturally knows that it's protected and it grows accordingly, right? Yeah. And then I want to go back to the whole perception, right, of someone um, seeing you, kind of idolizing you and wanting to be like you. So if we look at that as a plus symbol, as a positive, right? And we look at Jason Roselle 
as a battery. When most people see you, they see your energy, but they look, it looks like your body, like your battery is full of positivity. But we both know a battery doesn't work with positivity. It needs negative charge and a positive charge to have this energy. But since people don't see the work that Jason Roselle does every day, they're just seeing the output of energy. They don't realize that Jason deals with his negative or toxic things as well as his great things. And then he shows up and this is the character, the influencer, the person who shows up in order to share things that he's learned, right? So now when they're seeing you since most of their life, they're not able to see the brighter sides of things like you and I are. They're in the negative, their battery, if you saw their battery, you see it giving out energy, but if you looked at it, it would be all negative symbols. So they almost wanna feed off of you because they think you have more positive energy to give to balance them out so that they can have like balanced electricity, right? Like a balanced charge, right? Because we can't live off of just positive charges and negative charges. We gotta live off a combination of both of them. And I believe when we live off of a combination of both of them in a balanced way, we attract a balanced individual. But if you're living high, right? you're going to track somebody low because they think there's something that you got that they don't have. When we all have the same thing. We just express and act on it differently. That part. Yeah. So now it's not, now it's not negative. Now it's not somebody stealing. It's someone going, Hey, how did you get there? Like, how did you do that? But maybe the wording of the framing, we don't ask why enough, Jason, in sales, right? Everything in sales, every say someone's being sold every minute, either being sold on what you want to do or what you don't. But in sales, the biggest question is why? So when you asked me earlier, how do I deal with negative emotions? I go, why do I feel this way right now? Yeah. And then I'll allow for myself Oh, I feel this way because this person said this, that, and that. And I go, okay, where did I notice that? I noticed that here. Okay, as I'm listening to the story, the story was true, but it's not like facts. It was just true for that moment, but it's not a fact, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to live in me. And then all of a sudden, I start to find relaxing ease. I'm like, oh, cool. It's like I just read Green Eggs and Ham. I'm over the story. I'm ready for the next story. Yeah. But most of us want to keep reading Green Eggs and Ham over and over again and like, Ah, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm bored. Yeah, you're bored because your story doesn't change. Um, and you're telling the same story of people either taking or you giving, and the story doesn't make you feel balanced. It doesn't make you feel equal. Sure, sure, absolutely. Wow. Again, really deep. And, and, and let me ask you this. For someone that is, uh, you know, really new, and I don't want to call them naive, but they're very... They, they don't really meditate much. They don't know how to center themselves because maybe they have, I mean, geez, I, I just had a potential client that I met up with yesterday and he suffers from severe ADHD. So he has a major hard time concentrating, right? So what do you tell people that are fairly new uh, to, to wellness, mentally, emotionally, physically, how to not, we don't want to use a word protect, but how to gauge and how to balance ourselves, you know, and of course, you know, they, they got to do some Qigong as well. And, and, you know, we'll put your information here so they can learn more about your practice, but just give us a few tips on that. Like how, how does someone really center themselves and also become aware of what's good and what's bad in, in a more simplistic uh, format? The, the best way is we got to be easy on ourselves, right, Jason? Like, you're, you're a fitness coach. And when people come to you, they may not have worked out for 20 or 30 years, right? And that first day they come to work out with you, you don't put them through an hour and a half vigorous workout, right? Right. Nope. You, you put them through maybe, you kind of evaluate them, you take five or 10 minutes, you see where they're at, and you build from there. So I ask for people to do the same thing with mind, with wellfulness or mindfulness. Like, we're not going to go and try to do an hour meditation a day. We're not going to try to do even 20 minutes. But if you could take two minutes today, right? Two minutes, right? Chuck really used to say the, the love connection, right? Chuck Willery, for people that know that, go look up the love connection. It was a dating show. And he used to say, be back in two and two, right? So if you could just take two minutes out of the day, out of a moment, and just sit with yourself with no phone, no TV, no nothing, and just breathe and notice into your body. Isn't that two more minutes that you took yesterday? Mindfully? Not because you were in the car board, not because you were in a grocery store line board, but because you were sitting at home and you said, you know what, I'm going to take two minutes today 
to just notice what I feel like. And I'm going to notice my breath and my feeling. It's that simple. Yep. Now, once again, people come to you for a reason, Jason, right? Because even though it is that simple, even Kobe needed a coach. Even Jordan needed a coach, right? And after they got coached, somebody that saw it from the inside and could give them details on how they could make their game better, they became the greatest of all times. Yeah. So when people come to people like you and I, that's what they're coming for. They're coming for those small baby steps so we can release you back out into the wild of life and be the greatest of all times. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? We all, you know, we all can be stubborn. I know you're stubborn. You know, I know I can be that's very right. stubborn. And and it's uh, it's sometimes letting down our guard, right? And just simply riding the wave, riding the wave, because that's pretty much what I've learned that's helped me. Because life is tough. Every day I wake up and I, and this is an analogy, I look out the window and there's always a shit storm. There's always a storm. I expect the storm. But what I do is I don't get mad about the storm because I know every day is going to be some chaos. And I just know I don't let the chaos control me. So back to what you were saying, I've become okay with it. Meaning, same thing. I've suffered with anxiety on and off for God knows over 30 years. When I feel anxiety before when I didn't have the knowledge you and I have now, I used to freak out and give myself a panic attack. And that panic attack would cause me to stay inside my apartment for freaking two months and isolate myself. Right. right. And now, I want you guys to notice right now, Jason's laughing about this. And during that time, it wasn't a laughing thing, but notice where you can be at later with it. And I just want to point that out because we skip over things in life and that's where that's where the nuggets are. That's where the gold is. Like we become wealthy when we notice how we've grown. We don't become wealthy because there's money in our bank because that's spent in order to get material things. But when you really reflect on where you've been and where you've come from, that's where you feel value and worth. And that's why when you see this guy every day, he's amazing. He's pumped up because he fills his piggy bank every day with love and energy, man. So I appreciate that, Jay. And I appreciate you for saying that because I even would have skipped that part because funny. We, we see this on TV, you know, all these celebrities like, oh, wow, they have the perfect body. They got the career, the cars, but people do not want to see the hard work, the behind the scenes. And every day I work, you work on <laughs> becoming better, not bitter every day, but yes. with the knowledge. It's example, like you brought up, okay, Jason, you're also a fitness coach. I can get people in great shape, but it's up to them to stick to that, right? Same thing with us. We, okay, anxiety. When, when I get it, because I get it every day, it can be sometimes once or it could be eight. As soon as it comes, it's like peekaboo. There it is. I'm like, oh, hey, motherfucker, <laughs> right? Yeah. We I, sat down and had coffee last week. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, what you What's want? On? What's up? And the, 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 we'll call it, and I learned this from Eckhart Tolle, the author of the book, The Power of Now. It's basically, it's the monster. The monster is so used to taking over your mind and your body that the monster's like, Jason, you're supposed to be in fear. You're supposed to feel suffocated. You're supposed to be worrying right now. You're you should try to control things that you can't control. And once you realize that, hey, I, I'm letting go of trying to take control. I'm just going with the flow. That's when you're in your power. That's it. It's so cool. So I want to share one because I was with a tarot card reader uh, about two days ago and she said something and I've always been like the ocean and you were just talking about waves and going with the flow and we're talking about negative and positive. And the advice she gave me as a Scorpio was like, I need to wait. I need to ride out the positive waves. So if I think about it, like if you were surfing, right, you would be in the water and you would see like, oh, here it comes. Here comes the wave. Right. And then you you prepare yourself for it. And before you know it, you up on it and cruising and eventually you come down, right? But if I panicked at the end when I was coming down, I would go in the water and drown. But instead, instead of panicking, it's like you just rest for a minute and kind of wait for that next positive wave again. And I think it's all about the way that we look at it so that we can play with it and have fun, man. It's got to be fun. Yeah. 
it's got to be fun. Even the bad moments when you, that's why I, I don't know what your exact practice is. Like for me every morning for about 15 minutes, I sit alone and I read all of my affirmations, my journaling, and I basically, I talk to myself. I have a conversation with myself as to how I want to feel. What do I have to do to get there? And what my worth is, what am I doing daily to get closer to that? So I'm what I call priming. I'm priming okay. myself, right? Before going out, mm -hmm. because then when shit hits the fan, because it does every day, right. right? Yeah. I'm in such a chill state that I know how to deal with conflict in a very seamless way that it just doesn't affect me. Whereas my ego before was like, like I'm a New Yorker, right? And when someone would be like, hey, blah, 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 whatever it may be, my ego would be like, I have to one up you. I have to be louder than you. I have to scream, I, whatever I have to do. I didn't, I didn't do this consciously. It was unconscious. So when I prime myself in the morning, Rob, I get myself in such a chill state that you can, unless you're threatening my life or my family's life, you can yeah. say, do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, to piggyback on that, like my morning practice, it changes every morning, right? But it has one factor that's continuous. It's that my body wakes me up at three or five o'clock. Even if I went to bed at 10, 12, two, my body wakes me up. So when my body wakes me up, it's normally because there's something on my mind, right? Yeah. And what I what I used to do is I'm like, man, I got to get up. I got kids. I got to do this. And I forced myself to go back to sleep, right? And then I would get up and then the family would be started. And I'm like, damn, my day's off too. Oh my God. Like, I feel like I was chasing after things, right? And I've been in this practice for 14 years and I would still do this. And then one day I was like, Rob, you know when your body wakes up at three and five, what you're supposed to do. So do it. So then as opposed to me going back to sleep, I would just sit there. And as I sit there, as opposed to saying like affirmations or anything, I would have just allow for my my brain to share whatever story was going on. Like, okay, you got to pay that bill today. This is going on. That's going on. And I just sit there until it was just silent. And then once it was silent, like, okay, now I can lay back down and get like 20 minutes of real like rest. Right. And then when I woke up, I'm ready to go. So as opposed to me telling my body what to do, I spend at least 15 to 20 minutes just listening to a motherfucker. Like, hey, dude, I'm waking you up at three. I got some things to tell you. Yep. Today, you got to go to the bank. You got to do this. You got to do it. Now, you go back to sleep. If you go back yeah. to sleep, when you get up at nine, you're going to be behind the eight ball, dude. So what do you want to do? Yeah. And, and it's it. You live and you learn. It's not a bad or a negative thing. It's just... How well do you want to play this game, Jason? How sharpened do you want to be your knife? How well do you want to be able to pivot and still dunk that fucking ball when something gets in your way? That's the question you got to ask yourself. And why do you want to get there? And yeah. when you have that, that's when you show up looking like this, baby. Smiling from here to here. Woo -hoo. <laughs> See? That, that's another thing. Because uh, I, I, we, we only have a few minutes left here. Uh, <laughs> one thing I forgot to mention uh, is... I, I have fun with myself every day and I, and I'm very goofy. Is, Say what? Is that appropriate for here? Okay. I was just making sure we're going the right angle here. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for you, for yeah. anyone that's listening right now, Rob just totally caught me off guard in his own little Scorpio fun way. Uh, make sure uh, to check out the YouTube episode if you're listening right now, but listen, um, I look in the mirror and I literally pull a bench stiller. Uh, from the the the, the movie, uh, you know what movie? I don't want to do, but Zoom. oh, we can't. Okay, got it. Got it, got it. <laughs> okay, you can, yeah, fine. Zoolander, yes, you name Zoolander. It. There we go. I literally just I go into my Vogue mode. I'm like, who are you? You know you're sexy. You know you're beautiful. You know you have guns of steel, right? <laughs> and I get myself there because. I, I know we're all oh beautiful. We're yeah. all a badass, but we have to get ourselves there. Okay, so one last pivotal question, and then okay. you can say whatever you want. We'll plug the hell out of you. Done. We know we can't change people. We know we can't change situations that, you know, that are out of our hands. Um, but we can control ourselves. 
on how we react and respond to those things. What do you do for people? What, what advice do you give for people that are unhappy in their relationship, whether it be at work, whether it be with their significant other, and they just can't change the person. They want, they want them to act and talk like this, but what do you do? What do you do? Do you stay? Do you go? Do you stay? Do you go? I know this is a tough you, one for you, but <laughs> no, it's it, it's very it's it's easy. You know why, Jason? Because the answer is you just you let it be, man. Like there's nothing you can actually do about it, right? The only thing you can ever do is focus on you. Mm-hmm. And it's like we all know that question, right? And know that answer, like yeah, man. And it's um. For, for to answer the question, this is what I'll say. I wouldn't give you advice because okay. as as a therapist and as an energy person, I want you to find the answer. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't give you advice. What I would do is I would say, call Jason or call Rob, tell them what's going on and let them take you through some exercises and some practices so you can dec- discover it for yourself. I like that. I like that. I mean, you're also very smart. No liabilities against you. <laughs> Well, I mean, right, no. right. Because guess what, Jason? If I gave you advice right now, it's like you. If if I'm giving advice, I'm giving it from seeing this much of the picture, right? Yep. You're the only one that knows the whole picture, and you're only feeding me this much of it, right? So yep. as you feed me this much of it, I say go into this much of it into you, and you go into it and go, oh, I feel that. And then before you know it, like, I got yeah. a coach, I got my answer, and you appreciate and love me more because you got the answer, and I didn't give it to you because otherwise. You got to keep coming back to me, dude. And I'm not here to be a drug dealer or a healer. I'm here to be someone to provide space for you to find yourself. That's it, dude. That's it. Like, this isn't no esoterical, yeah. magical. It's literally someone who's done enough work, been through enough shit, is wise enough to listen to someone and hold space and guide them to a place of satisfaction and love within themselves so they can attract more of that. Done. Done. Get it done. done. With Coach Rob Silver, make sure you follow him on Instagram. GID Life, baby. You know how we do it over here. So it's at Coach Rob Silver. I repeat, that's odd. (laughs) Now I sound like one of those airplane uh, aborting at 5.45 p.m. going to Houston, Texas. (laughs) If you're sitting in aisle 13. Right. Yeah, exactly. If you want a quick bump. Which goes back to, once again, right? What did they tell you during that speech? Put the mask on yourself first, Jason. Yep. On yourself first. And what do you got to do when you put the mask on? You got to breathe. You got to get yourself stable if you want to help anyone. So as opposed to you being stressed and worried and triggered, and how am I going to help someone? How am I going to make this work? How am I going to do this? You're going to calm your ass down (laughs) and take a breath and figure out how you could approach the situation a little bit better and let that person figure it out. I live in LA where someone just hit the billion dollar lottery on Skid Row. Wow. That just happened, right? And the reason I bring it up is because I walk through Skid Row a lot. And when I walk through, I don't look at those people as less than me. I look at them as my equal. Because if you look at someone as though that they can't support themselves, you're reflecting something upon them that's not true. Now, maybe they're in a situation where they currently aren't doing the best at it. But if you show up in a way with someone and you support them in a way where you see the best in them and then walk away, now it's up to them to decide to keep holding that on. And you don't want to keep putting money in that anyway, because then you'd be depleting yourself and you wouldn't have any money. You you want to show them how to get their bank account started, you know? Yep. Okay. I got to ask you, what do you do? Because I've I've worked with hundreds of, of, of clients, students of mine in, in the relationship field. What do you tell someone? Because I know what I coach and you know my clients are very happy with me, but I want to hear your perspective. What do you do with someone that, say you're the type, I don't know, say you text a lot, right? You're like, you're always very loving, kind, and maybe that significant other. And I've had lots of women complain about their male partner's and say they're not really as loving or give them as much time. Do you, because you seem like the type of guy, oh, well, whatever, just just roll with it. You know, just like, okay, it's no big deal. I just said, I love you, sent you 18 emojis, and they just said, thanks, with a little heart. And you're like, damn, that was dry. 
What do you tell to the loving, sensitive men or women out there that are like, come on, like, come on. I just want more because here's the thing, Rob. I feel a lot of times people stay in relationships because on paper, they're like, okay, they have a good job. You know, they're good people, but I don't feel love and good things is enough sparkle to make someone say, I have to stay. I feel life is so short that it should be lived within ourselves and complete happiness and be with someone that brings you to even a higher state. Go. First of all, I use voice notes, dude, because I'm a terrible texter and you know this because we text back and forth. I, yeah. I get really excited and my grammar is terrible. So for me, when you ask me that question, a lot of times, say if I'm in a relationship and someone texts me and it's this long thing, it's like I'm too uncomfortable to text back a lot just because my text and writing skills are terrible. Now, that's an excuse. Right. So I go on the dictionary. I write. I rip out excuses and I figure out a way around it. Right. And a way around it is I leave voice notes. So if you leave a voice note, that can hold the essence of your love, your energy, and it's not misconstrued. I didn't grow up during text messages, right? I grew up when we had pagers and you could page somebody, let's go to bed. Like you could page numbers and they could flip it or they could sure. go my way. Like they're little messages. Oh, wait, 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 right? not, but, not to but, interrupt. Go. But what, what yeah. do you, are you telling me, we, we literally only have two minutes left. What do we, are you, okay. tell, are you telling me that we should tell the female audiences or males that if you're a big texter and your partner isn't to tell your partner to send voice notes. I only say that. What if the what if the partner is working all day and he can't send a voice note? Well, in that case, then you have to be patient, right? Like that's another thing in a relationship. You have to have patience. You have to have responsible responsible boundaries. Like if you know your partner is at work and they had a hard fucking day and they tell you about it every day, for you to hold against them, why aren't you hitting me back? Like. So you're going to do the same thing to them their job is doing to them. That means you really aren't as aware of what that person needs because what they really need is for you to chill out. <laughs> and when they get home, provide a space for them to share. Yeah. That's it, you know? And and, so, and that takes patience, right? And some of us don't have patience because like you said, we're talking about text messages. Look, I saw you just read my text message. It took you two hours to answer back to me. I know you already saw it. Oh, you're on Instagram. I, I can work. You got time for everything else but me. And it's like, dude, slow down. Hold up. It's going to come to you in time, right? Like you can't control someone else. You have to allow for them. Maybe they're processing the last thing you said and they're not ready to respond to it. Or maybe they're going to ghost you and never say anything again. And they say sometimes that's a blessing in disguise, too. So I would say we got to be patient and you do have to learn how to use use the technology and communicate more. It feels good. People always make time for what they want to make time for. And that same partner at work that's complaining about work all day, if they took 10 minutes and sent the voice note of love and energy towards their partner and got one back, I guarantee you their day would go better. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of ways to answer that question, but I think that's up to that couple and that for them to decide, right? And figure out what works best for them. I agree. I agree. And and like you said, there is a lot of answers for everybody. There's a lot of different strategies. So not... There's not one all formula for everybody. I I feel personally, you have to do what's right for you, what feels right to you, right? And what, and like Rob said, be patient. Because if we take things personally every time, we're only hurting ourselves and self-sabotaging ourselves in this matter. And if you have to express that to your partner, hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. I prioritize you this way. I would like to be felt as a priority because if you're, if I see you on Instagram or checking my text messages and you're not responding, that is a F you to my face. So have the conversation and be yes. patient. Be patient. Rob, where would you say is the best place that people can follow you? I know it's you're on every platform. Yeah. Go, give it the to best me. place to follow me is IG, man. Coach Rob Silver. Hit me up on Coach Rob Silver. DM me there. Message me there. Coach Rob Silver. Real easy. Coach don't, Rob. Don't send him dirty photos, though. Don't send him dirty photos. No, no dirty photos. No dirty photos. Just, just <laughs> smiles and giggles because you enjoyed something I said and maybe you got some nuggets out of it, man. I like it. I love. Hey, listen, Rob, I love you, brother. Seriously. I, uh, I got nothing but appreciation to you, for you. And I hope anyone that's watching or listening really takes the time to 
apply all the techniques and all the suggestions that were brought up today. Because if me and Rob can change just even one person's life every day, this is why we do what we do. Yeah, and no, I, I, I enjoy this, man. Like, I, we literally get to do what we love doing for a living, and we get to love on people. So my wish at the very beginning, it's already come true. So I appreciate you, Jason, man. Much love, brother. <laughs> Much love. I mean, have, God. have the best day ever. Keep it caliente. I'll see you on the next one. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer. And don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.